Hello and welcome back to my channel. So today you could probably see from the thumbnail um, something a bit different but something that I've been doing for a while now in my spider room and it's can you breed a tarantula that is not fully grown. Well I've been looking through all arachno boards and stuff like that trying to get some information off others over the past year and I've done some breeding myself, fully grown adults but it's just, if a female's not fully grown, is it possible? And I couldn't really find any info out there apart from somebody saying that um, the tranche of the female tranche needs to be at least two thirds of the size of her adult size um, in order to pair. But what I've been doing is obviously you've got to wait till the male matures. You can't do nothing until the male matures. But what I do is if I buy a tarantula, I never get a tarantula on its own. So that's why I don't buy mystery boxes anymore um, because you always end up getting single tarantulas. And then when that matures, if you're looking for something to breed with it, sometimes it's hard for the rarer species to get them at the same time. So I always buy two to three and then I raise them together in enclosures. So they're up on my shelf in the enclosures together. So today this one is the Melognanthus species South Mindano, the Mindaniano tree spider, I think that's how you say it. And I've just refreshed her enclosure because I paired her a while ago and she's in this little tub, which I'll give you a close up. Now she's all scrunched up, she's three inches, but she's all scrunched up and she looks absolutely tiny. But she is in there. Let me just take that off and show you. So there she is, you can see her pink toes and you can see the tiger coloration on her abdomen. And she's all scrunched up because this is their natural defensive position. Really, really beautiful colors. Uh, only just started feeding again, um, but still nowhere near fully grown. I think they can get to around 18 centimeters from what I found, not a lot of people have them. But um, these are absolutely brilliant. They go into that position where they just scrunch up and that's their defensive position. Then they're not prone to bite. Their death position is they will just run. If they can't hunker down and be left alone, they will eventually run and they are lightning fast. I've had this one out running around all over my desk and I managed to catch it and just push it back in. It ran over my hand. But what I've noticed with these is they don't bite. They're not prone to bite. They just hunker down. Unless you put pressure on them, then I think they would bite. But um, if you just stay calm, you can catch them. They just want to run all over the place. But going back to the point, um, I keep them together. So the males obviously mature out and this species is nocturnal. So you don't see a lot of them. So they pretty much see that scrunched up. They may come out a second, it may not, but I think it probably won't. But they're nocturnal, so they come out and they feed at night and they get really active at night. As soon as they see any movement via shadows or light in the room, they run and hide immediately and go back down. And they take an age to come back out again into um, the area that they know in their enclosure um, once they've seen a threat or something like that. Um, so you don't really see them that much, especially if you get them from a tiny sling, which I did with this one. Um, and you can see this is not a, a massive tub. So like I said, only about three inches. But... Um, the males come out and then start drumming and then what I've noticed is females will drum back as well and I've got a few other species I've got that are bred which are doing the same um, but this one I just thought she's not fully grown but he's fully grown he's slightly the same size as I should have put them in and I tried to do some research out there and everybody was saying no wait till they're an adult but I don't see the problem because normally it's the female that eats the male if the female's smaller than the male she's more prone to not eat the male and this species has not shown any aggression whatsoever male or female and I watched them for a week nearly two weeks drumming back and forth back and forth every single day so I thought what the hell put the male in he lived in there with her for I'd say two weeks and they were pairing all the time so once they get past a certain stage, it is possible to pair the females, but then it's, um, will they drop a sack? But luckily for this one, she molted two weeks, sorry, two months before that, if I remember my notes. Um, so she was really active, she was eating and she paired. And then within two weeks of me removing the male, she went down and webbed over the whole burrow at the bottom of the enclosure. And then I got some eggs, which I put on the screen um, a few days ago. And I'll just show you these. So they did create a sack and we have about 50. I've tried counting them, but I just keep losing track because they're all just close together. But it, for the last week, I couldn't see any movement. They've started getting bigger, but every now and then I can see their legs move. 
and one of them will just roll around slightly in there, but they're all well. I didn't have a single bad one in the sack. They're only moving slightly. I don't know if you can see that, but I know they've improved over the last week. So they are eggs with legs and they are doing really, really well. So I am really happy with that. So it's about 50 there. So I'm super, super chuffed with that. So I've got an incubator at the back of the room, which I can put them in, but because a section of my room always goes to 24, 25 degrees, I've just been leaving them out and they're fine. And then I just make sure every day I come in, make sure there's moisture in the bottom of my container. And I've just cut the bottom out of another container, the exact same size, dropped it down, put the mesh at the bottom. So then the eggs sit on the mesh. So then the water can, uh, evaporate up and through and then I've just put a band around it and I've left the mesh on the top as well just so then full air, air circulation but the egg sack was tiny it was like I'd say five pence piece and I thought oh that's just going to be a dead null um, egg sack but then every week I checked on it it was getting bigger and bigger and she was rotating it brilliantly and she was moving from one side of the enclosure to the other and if I missed it above on one side of the enclosure she moved away to the other side then I just rotated a week later and she moved to the other side and she kept it perfectly well then one day she left it and just completely left it so I thought I'd wait a few hours went through to the next night uh, of the next day and she still had it left alone so I thought then I'd pull it just in case because I had a feeling she may eat it and I pulled it and she ran straight towards me, tried to grab it. So I knew she still had good mothering instincts. And then obviously by me pulling it, I split the sack. Uh, didn't damage any, but it was all brilliant. And I saw them, so I put them out in there. So that proves you can breed tarantulas that are not fully grown. Because as you can see, she is nowhere near fully grown. And these apparently get to about 18. I reckon anywhere from 15 onwards, but it's uh, an arboreal spider. Um, good size fangs, uh, no information on the, the venom, but I would say it's um, a good bite, quite potent. Um, just from what I've seen with the prey items, when they put them in, they just bite and they're dead within about a minute. So I think that's pretty good. But so that's another one that I've bred. I also did the Ephobus uataman from Brazil. I bred them early, the female early, and she dropped a sack straight away. So as long as the male's mature and you put them together, closure and closure and you see constant drumming from the male but the key is to see drumming from the female if you see drumming from the female and what I notice is both enclosures together the male spider would come over and the female spider would just stay by the male and that's how I knew they'd be ready and I'm doing the same also with the Selena Cosmia Craspapes at the minute and I've just paired my GBB which I'm hoping she'll drop a sack because she's just polished off the male after living with him for quite some time now um, so I hope that you know, shows you out there if you do have them, try and always get two. If the male's matured within the two years and the female's got to a good size, if she's drumming, put him in there. Always put him in her enclosure, pair them up, and you never know. All you can do, if not, is just remove the male um, if she gets stressed, but she's gonna act differently if she gets stressed and you're gonna be able to see straight away. So that's all I did, and I've got a sack from it. And what I'll probably do is I'll probably give uh, some of these slings away to a few of you subscribers, probably the ones that always comment the most because you're there all the time, you're always commenting and I really do appreciate your comments. So you know who you are, the ones that always comment. So if you'd like to receive one of these, UK only I'm afraid, if you'd like to receive one or two, I'll probably pick like three people and send them a couple each um, in the post. I'll figure out what I'm gonna do with that and I'll let you know once they're ready. But once they've um, done their first in star and then second, I'll move them out to little enclosures. You'll see me do updates with them and I will not be sending them like a tiny, tiny sling. So I'll at least wait till they've started feeding on good size and they've got a good abdomen and then I'll send them out to you so you know they'll be okay. So if any of you do want those, please obviously leave a comment down below and uh, I will sort something out probably after Christmas, probably January, um, probably the end of January, something like that. And then I'll get them sent to you um, free of charge, probably choose three people um, just to give back to all of you that comment on my channel. So I do appreciate it. So you don't have to pay nothing for those. I'll probably send out two each. Just hopefully they're all going to be good, which I do think they are. So now we've got to try and get her back into this new enclosure. And this is the tricky bit, because if any of you have got these species, once they hunker down, they do not move. They just grip with their toes. And you can see um, their toes sort of, the what's called it, the hair 
separates and you get the hooks come out and it does this sort of movement and you can catch it and I saw it doing it earlier and they grip and they will not move at all. So I think I'm going to have a problem trying to get her in there. Um, and then what she may do is just explode and just go boof, straight off and out. But let's just see what I can do. So there she is. So well camouflaged. And see if I can tap her out and then you can see her size at the minute. So we get a rough estimates. And I'll love her to go sit on her here, but she won't. She'll dart off straight away. They do not like being out in the bright light. Let's see if I can just pop this down. All right, let's see. Like, I'm not even joking. I'll be able to lift this, like, up with the paintbrush and she still will not move. You see what I mean? Let's get her to come out. There we go, absolutely stunning. And you can see how chilled she was from me just prodding her there. They do not want to move. No threat display from the species, just it stays slow like that and then all of a sudden it'll explode and disappear. But absolutely gorgeous. I wonder if I can get a slight measurement. All right, she's about 12 centimetres, I'd say bang on maybe just a little bit more, 12 centimetres. So that's pretty good size. Um, so whether that's two thirds of the size, if they can get to around about 18 centimetres. Um, but you know, it worked, paired, she's eating well again. I just want to get a hunker down in here so she can do a web and feel secure. And then we'll start plying her with more food. And then hopefully I can find another one of a male of this species, but it does work. You can pair these at such a young stage. Let's see if we can get her to go this way. Come on, get on the court bark and then you'll run off. Absolutely beautiful. So all I've done is put a fake plant in there, but that is real moss all across the bottom and just some dry substrate with a bit of moisture substrate on the top with a gravel layer with a mess separation. And then just a water dish hot glued in and a nice hollowed out cork bark that goes all the way down to the bottom. So hopefully she should use that. So there you have it. You can see her there right down at the front. Uh, as soon as I turn the lights off, she'll disappear. She'll go in and start webbing up the back. So I know for a fact that that can happen. And I've got it with another species that's done it before. And I'm trying to do it still now. So you can out there pair them together, but it's just watching their behavior. As, as I said, side to side, if you see the male do it, you see the female do it, just put the male in. Um, Obviously, you could send a male off to somebody else, but I'll be fine with certain species I've got now because I've got a lot of rarer ones and hardly anybody's got a female at that same size if I've got a male. So I will try and do it. I think I'm doing the same with my Lungardi. They're not fully grown and the male's living with the female and they're pairing. So if it happens with them, it happens with them as well. So I'll do the same. So if you do want some from me, uh, leave a comment below and I'll go through them after Christmas and then I'll contact you and ask for your details and I'll probably send you a couple out to uh, say three, I'm not too sure, three, two people, I don't know. I'll sort something out in January, but uh, leave your details in the comments below and I'll speak to you after Christmas.